Hey everyone! I know I usually just give you a link to the stuffed animal clothes patterns I make, but those don't fit all stuffed animals and of course yours specifically. So today I'm going to show you how to make your own patterns for a hoodie and dress. I did a video like this over a year ago for t-shirt and pants and it was super popular so I wanted to do some more. Now let's get started. The basic materials you'll need for this are some paper to cut your patterns out of, I like to use recycled printer paper, but you could even use newspaper. I also am using a bendable tape measure and a ruler for straight lines. If you don't have a flexible tape measure, you could even just make your own out of paper and make the little measurement markings with a ruler first. You'll also need a pencil to draw them and scissors to cut them out. And of course, you need the stuffed animal you're making this for. Okay, so I'm going to start with the hoodie, and the first thing I'm measuring is from a little over her shoulder to however long you want the hoodie to be. I want mine to go to about five and a half inches, and I'm adding an extra half inch for the hem, so I can take my paper and mark six inches up from the bottom, and I'm putting this about an inch away from the left side of my paper. Then I need to measure across her stomach, so I'm wrapping the tape measure around her front, letting it go past that side seam a little, and that number is eight and a half, so I'm increasing it to nine inches for seam allowance, and that I'm going to mark along the bottom of the paper. I'm actually only going to draw half this pattern and then just fold it in half to cut it out so it's the same on both sides. That's why I'm making a marking at the midpoint. Next, I'm placing the measuring tape at her side again, under her arm, and looking to see how far that is away from the start of her shoulder. I'm kind of tracing an imaginary line down from her shoulder to the measuring tape, and for me, it's one and a half inches. I don't need to add a seam allowance because I placed the measuring tape a little past her side seam. Now I'm marking that distance away from the left edge of my paper. Also, I put this mark a little too low, you'll want to put it closer to that top marking. Next, I'm measuring from the top of her shoulder down to under her arm, so I put the tape over her shoulder, and I'm looking to where the bottom of her arm is, then adding an extra half inch, so mine was three and a quarter inches, that way the sleeves aren't too tight. It's perfectly normal if this is like half the length of the hoodie. I'm adding a marking three and a quarter inches below that initial line we made. Then I can extend that line all the way to the left. Now I need to connect those last few marks I made with a curve. You can really draw it however you want, but I prefer it to not be very steep at the start, but then really steep at the end. It's kind of hard to explain, but I guess just try to make a shape similar to mine. Next, I need to measure how wide her shoulder is, and for Build-A-Bears, I usually stick with one inch, which as you can see is a little wider than how big it actually is. But of course, you want to measure your stuffed animal's shoulder specifically and just make it a little bit wider. And I'm adding that measurement next to the top of the curved line I just drew. Lastly, I need to measure how low the neckline will be, so I'm placing the measuring tape at the top of her shoulder again and seeing how far down I want it to go. I'd usually do like 2 inches for a t-shirt or anything with a collar, but with a hoodie I like the neck to be tighter, so I'm only going to have it be 1.5 inches deep. I'm first extending that top of the shoulder line so I can make a mark one and a half inches below it, pretty close to the middle of the pattern. This looked a little too low for me, so I made the measurement shorter, but I eventually had to trim it more, so I should have just left that mark the same. But now I can connect those last two marks I made with a curve. And now, so I don't have to draw the exact same thing on the other side, I'm just going to fold it in half and cut it out following the side I drew. Now for the back of the hoodie, you don't have to make a new one, you can just use this front one, but I wanted to make the neckline in the back higher, so all I'm doing is tracing the pattern I just made onto a new piece of paper, except I'm drawing the neckline slightly higher. And after that, the main front and back pieces are done. You might notice that your stuffed animal doesn't have very prominent shoulders, even less so than mine, but a way to account for this is when it gets to the part in the tutorial when I sew together the shoulders straight across, you can instead sew them together with kind of a diagonal line to match the shape of your stuffed animal's shoulders better. If your stuffed animal doesn't really have shoulders, that line will be really steep, but you can consult my four-legged stuffed animal video for more detail about that. Okay, next I'm going to make the sleeves. Luckily, we only need three measurements for these, and the first one I'm taking is around my stuffed animal's entire arm. Measured around loosely, I got eight inches, but I'm adding an extra half inch, so it's eight and a half. Since my paper is already eight and a half inches wide, I don't need to mark it, but that's how long the pattern will be. Next, I'm measuring from the top of her arm to however long I want the sleeves to be, and since this is a hoodie, I want it to be long sleeves. So I'm measuring all the way to the very end of her arm to account for the hem, and I got around five and a quarter inches. 
So in the middle of the pattern, I'm making a mark five and a quarter inches up from the bottom. Then I need to take basically that same measurement, except I'm starting from under her arm. So I'm trying to measure to the same point as I did for the last one. And for me, that is about four inches. I can make that mark on the far left edge of my paper. Now I can connect this mark and the top one with a curve. You can ignore those little marks I made. It was too complicated to explain and they're not really necessary. When drawing this curve, you just wanna make sure it starts out pretty flat and then flattens again once it gets to the top. That's so it's not too pointy in the middle. And that's all there is to it. There's no need to draw the other side because I'm just gonna fold it in half and cut it out following the side I drew. And after that, your sleeve pattern is done. Now, before I move on to the hood, I'm just going to quickly sketch out a little pocket, which I like to add since a lot of hoodies have them. I'm really just looking at the front pattern and seeing around how wide and tall I want it to be, and I'm just sketching that out on my paper. Once you've sketched out how big you want the pocket to look, you'll want to sketch about a quarter inch border around that, because when you sew it to the hoodie, you'll have to hem the edges and the pocket will get a lot smaller. After I have the shape I want, I'm folding it in half and cutting it out. Lastly, I'm going to make the hood pattern, which can be the trickiest part, but I've come up with a simpler version that isn't as complicated. Since I'm changing up how I usually make my hood patterns, I'm first looking at a Build-A-Bear hoodie I got a long time ago. As you can see, the sides of the hood don't meet in the center like hoodies for people, and that's probably because Build-A-Bears and most stuffed animals don't really have necks. But I just wanted to show that this is the kind of hood I'm going for. The first measurement I'm going to take is around her face, and I'm not wrapping it around completely, I'm leaving a little space in the middle. For me, that measurement is 15 and a half inches. I'm really only drawing half of the hood right now though, so I'm dividing that measurement in half and adding a little extra for seam allowance, which gave me eight inches. So now I can draw an eight inch vertical line close to the right edge of my paper. The next measurement I need to take is starting from the back middle of her neck to around where I want the hood to end, which I found to be five inches, so I'll add an extra half inch. And now I can line that measurement up with the bottom of the line I just drew. After that, I can connect the ends of those lines in a curve that looks like the profile of a hood. It'll probably look a lot bigger than your stuffed animal's actual head, but that's normal. If you want your hood really tight though, I guess you could make the measurement smaller. And after that, it's pretty much done, and now I can cut it out. The last thing I'm doing, which is optional, is sketching a little curve into the bottom middle of this, and that's just so it fits with the main part of the hoodie better. But even if you don't do this, the hood should connect pretty much the same. I also wanted to quickly compare this to the previous hood patterns I've made. They look pretty different, but I wanted to revise it because when I used this kind of pattern for the first hoodie I made, it turned out a little big and kind of loose in the front, so hopefully this new pattern will work better and it's a lot easier to draw. If you want the full tutorial on how to use these patterns to assemble your hoodie, I'll have the video linked in the description box. The only thing slightly different when using this pattern is you'll have to cut out two mirror images of this, and they won't be connected, but you'll still sew them together along this curve, just like the other one. Okay, now I'm going to move on to making the dress pattern. I'm using a different stuffed animal to model this to show you can do this for any size stuffed animal. Luckily, dress patterns are a lot simpler and they can be broken up into two parts, the skirt and the top. I'm going to start with a skirt pattern, so the first thing I'm measuring is all around my stuffed animal's waist, or really just the area you want the middle of the dress to be. For me, it was 14 inches, and I'm just going to write that down first. Depending on what kind of skirt you're going for, you're going to have to multiply this measurement by different numbers. So for what I'd call a bubble skirt or one with an elastic, you'll want to multiply this number by two. I don't know why I wrote down elastic because you can't really use an elastic for a dress, but when I say bubble skirt, I mean the one where I pull the thread along the top edge to make the whole thing ruffled, and I used that same technique for these two dresses. But if you want the skirt to be pleated, either using a fork or triangle pleats, you'll want to multiply your measurement by three. For my previous pleated dress videos, I didn't make the piece long enough, and that's why my pleats were really small, so if you want more obvious ones, multiplying the number by three is perfect. I typically go for a bubble skirt kind of look, so I'm just going to multiply the waist measurement by 2, which gives me 28 inches. I'm just writing that down for now, and going to the next measurement, which is the length of the skirt. I'm measuring down from her waist to kind of above her foot, then adding an extra half inch, which gives me 4.5 inches. This is going to be the height of the rectangle, so I'm marking 4.5 inches up from the bottom of the page. 
And now is where I'm going to add that 28 inch measurement I calculated, but my paper isn't long enough, so I'm gluing another page on. And after measuring this, it's still too short, so instead of adding one more piece of paper, I'm gonna make this a half pattern and turn it back to half the length, so 14 inches. But since this is only a half pattern, when cutting this out of fabric, I'm gonna make sure to fold the fabric in half first so my piece ends up being twice as long, or I'm at least going to cut out two pieces that add up to 28 inches and then sew them together. I like to do half patterns when they end up being really long, just to save paper and make them easier to work with. After you've drawn your rectangle, it's pretty much done so I can cut it out, and I'm labeling it real quick to remind me that this is only a half pattern. I probably should have labeled those hood pieces too, but I forgot. Okay, after that, I can make the piece for the top, and for just a basic straight across top, you just need a rectangle, so that's what I'll start with. The first measurement I need is basically one I already took, and that's the one around her waist, but I'm remeasuring a little more accurately and got 13 inches, and you'll wanna add at least an extra inch because this kind of dress uses Velcro, so it has to overlap in the back, and adding that extra inch to mine gave me 14 inches. I'm just gonna keep that in mind and next measure how wide the top will be. So I'm placing the measuring tape below her arms and looking to where it hits her waist, which is around one and three quarter inches, but I'll add an extra half inch for the hem and seam allowance. When marking this on my paper, it looks really short, but that makes sense since this stuffed animal just has a really short torso. I'm also adding that 14 inch measurement for the length and can use those marks to draw my rectangle. Now that is all you need to do a basic straight across top, but if you wanna add a little variation and do kinda of like a mermaid cut like this, you'll wanna add a little curve to the front so you can eventually use a needle and thread to pinch the fabric in the center. I'll go with that design, so I'll add a little curve to the middle of my rectangle. When I did this design for a beanie boo though, I just made the whole top a half circle so her back was basically open, and that's always a great option too if your stuffed animal is really small. Some other designs you could do could be like this one, I think it's called a halter top, and you could run a string through the top hem and tie it around their neck. And you could make this backless, or you could just have some rectangles extended off the sides. Another option is a tank top, and the pattern for this is basically the same for a hoodie and t-shirt, just without the sleeves. Or you could do a more unique cut like this, I'm not sure what to call it, but I've done it before for a romper. Now I still haven't mentioned how to make the straps or sleeves, so the measurement you'll need for that is pretty self-explanatory. Just measure over her shoulder and look to where you want the straps to start and end. I like to make them pretty long just in case, so I went with four and a half inches. And when I first drew this, I just eyeballed the width, but I'm actually gonna measure that too. If you want a pretty wide strap like one inch, you'll wanna add at least a half inch for the hem since you'll be hemming both sides. I know it'll look really wide, but if they're still too thick in the end, you can always fold in the sides more. But the point is, whatever thickness you choose, just make sure to add extra for the hem. Now those are obviously the easiest straps to make, but you could also do different things with those depending on where you place them. Like you could have them cross in the back, so you just wanna measure how long they need to be for that, or you might want to have them connect behind the neck with Velcro, and in that case, you'll have to make them slightly longer than you think since they'll have to overlap. But instead of straps, you could also do sleeves, especially if you're doing a t-shirt cut top, so you could do regular sleeves like a t-shirt or do puffed sleeves, which I've done a video on. I really just wanted to show all the options you have when making dresses, and these of course are not all of them, the possibilities are endless, but I wanted to make it easier to approach making whatever kind of dress you want for your stuffed animal. Now I think that is all I had to say. I hope you found this video helpful and try making patterns yourself. It takes a while to get the hang of, but the best advice I can give from what I've learned over the years is to leave more seam allowance than you think because it can be really disappointing if the clothes turn out too tight to wear. Please give this video a like, comment any video requests you have, and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you next time!